I'm Elaine Sorensen, and I'm visiting again today with Elizabeth Grant. Welcome to part two of Adjusting to Change. Since we all come to Greenspring to age in place, over time, we will all experience changes in our vision, our hearing, and our mobility. So Elizabeth and I have been having a dialogue about how some options that are available when a change occurs can help the residents ma maximize their quality of life. I'm going to recap first, Elizabeth, that what we covered in, in our first visit, the things that you took advantage of here at Greenspring on the campus. Well, first of all, you, there are the assistive living, assistive hearing devices that are in all of the main uh, meeting rooms. And then you also have enrolled in the Fairfax County access book services and you use the talking books. You've uh, also met with uh, Bonnie O'Leary or at least you've visited the Northern Virginia Resource Center for the Heart of Hearing and had a chance to visit the, their uh, room where you could try out uh, telephones and, and other uh, uh, devices that they have. And uh, by the way, Bonnie O'Leary's meeting is on the first um, Monday of every month and if you residents want to uh, join uh, with her. She has a sign-up sheet on the Town Center Bulletin Board. And then Elizabeth, you also participated in the Low Vision Group with Catherine Hornbeck. That meets also on the first Monday in the afternoon in Town Center. That same day that we were talking, you uh, acquainted us with some of the devices you have been using and explained how uh, you also visited the Low Vision Eye Doctor. And that doctor referred you to one of his specialists, the nurse who came and made several visits uh, about modification to your apartment uh, in order to increase your safety and your comfort. So today I'm pleased that you have agreed to again sit down and talk with us. And it's, it's getting more complicated, isn't it? Because uh, we have a lot of, of items that she suggested and a lot of changes that you have made to your apartment. So we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to have a final uh, comment about mobility devices. So Elizabeth, you're on. Tell us about the visits to your apartment. Well, the, this went on for several months, once a week, that the low vision doctor uh, sent, a, he called her a therapist, mm -hmm. uh, to see if I was maximizing uh, the, my, my apartment and if I was safe in it since I am both hard of hearing and have low vision. I'll tell you one of the first things that I think was most important was this business of keys. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, almost impossible to live your life in an easy way if you cannot get in and out of your apartment. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many devices you have if you cannot access them. And so I'm sure everybody has, tr has some way of differentiating between the outside do uh, door key and the key to the apartment. Uh, I did this by putting a small dot, a raised dot, on the key to my apartment so that I could feel it. I didn't mm -hmm. have to see it. So that's the, the area of tactile... Tactile, uh, yes. Uh, uh, identification. Uh, identification and then there is a red rubber rim mm -hmm. around the key to the outside red because I can see that uh -huh. and again I can touch it again tactily this is a way of my identifying that key but that's not good enough you, if you can identify the key but if you can't get it into the keyhole <laughs> that again is uh -huh. fruitless and so uh, my, some, one of my children found this, which means that you can identify where the keyhole is at the same time trying to put it in. Also, the other thing about getting your key in the keyhole is that you should, with one hand, use your thumb to identify where the keyhole is and with the other hand, pressing here for the light, 
be able to direct the key into the key uh -huh. Now, many of you out there are saying, my goodness me, she can't even open her door. Believe me, it is a panicking uh, thought when you are fumbling around and that key just will mm -hmm. not fit. The fact that sometimes you've got the wrong key doesn't help matters. Uh, now, in, once you get inside the apartment, uh, I, the bathroom is the first door on the right. Mm -hmm. And there is probably the most, the first and most important important change that the therapist made. I have grab bars which are white, not metal, so that in my shower stall everything was white. Therefore she suggested that we take electrician's tape and do a barber, shop, barber pole uh -huh. motif around every one of the grab bars so that I d would be able, if I felt myself falling, be able to quickly identify where the nearest grab bar was. Mm -hmm. That uh, makes sense. It, it not only makes sense, but I've become more conscious of the grab bars since then. Uh, they really had just been part of the wall before that. Uh, one of the other things in the bathroom while we're there is the toothpaste. Uh, I was, without knowing it, stopping up the drainage pipe from the sink because when trying to put the toothpaste on the toothbrush, uh -huh. it was missing constantly and was therefore washing down huge globs of toothpaste which were sticking to the side of the pipe. Oh my goodness. The drainage pipe. And I was very much in danger of, of one day finding that the water was overflowing uh -huh. the basin when I turned it on. So this was again a very, very important thing that the uh, therapist... And then how, what did she do, tell you about how to get the toothpaste on? Uh, um, now isn't that awful that I, I've got the toothpaste in my hand but I still haven't got it on the brush. Take your finger. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course, that's a nice clean finger at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and you squeeze the amount of toothpaste about the size of a pea onto the end of your finger and apply it that way. Now, you, some of you may be going ugh, but believe me, it's your finger, and so if you're going ugh, wash it again before <laughs> you put the toothpaste on. The, see, is there anything... Uh, Else. Well, then I think she moved from the bathroom to your washer and dryer. Oh, in the washer and dryer is the next next stop. And I mentioned in our first visit that the best thing there is to take a very, very dark black magic marker or some kind of a pen and to make very identifiable marks by the settings that you are accustomed to using on both your washer and your dryer. Mm -hmm. And believe me, that takes a lot, doesn't take all that much time anymore to try to find that little small black dot which has now become a nice big firm bold mm -hmm. one. So the ability of contrast, I mean, that, that is, is really is, important for you is. to be able to make that distinction. It is, uh, and how does that apply in your kitchen, for your kitchen in, appliances? In the kitchen, of course, the same thing applies to be able to identify the marks for activating your stove, your microwave, your toaster. And I do that by using raised dots. I don't know what you call them, but you can buy them in any Home Depot or such mm -hmm. place which means that you can just feel, feel with your right. finger where you would activate a device or where, even more important, you would stop it if there seemed to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, along with the idea of contrast and safety, um, you have uh, some, some contrast in, for example, this tablecloth that you have. Yes. Tell, tell me about that. Now, this... The, the doctor originally asked me what I was going to miss most by not being able to see, 
and I told him bridge. Mm -hmm. And so there isn't too much that, unfortunately, that can be done about that. But it did bring up the pro the matter of contrast, and so he asked about my cover for my bridge table, and said that of these two colors, because it's reversible, I should take the one that is darker. Uh huh. Uh, that's th interesting. This is really not too different. This is not very light. But if you have a white or a pale pastel cover on your table, the white cards, regardless of red hearts or black spades, mm -hmm. there, there is no contrast, which is, which is what really helps you to see that little bit better than you did before you had good contrast. Now I'm going to take this away from you and I'm going to hand you How about this one? This, there you go. And this one is also contrast. These yellow, I'm sure you've seen people with these yellow lenses. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have, what should, it isn't just the contrast, but it helps a little with glare. Yes, a lot, it helps a lot with glare. And when you wear them inside, indoors and outdoors, and I had one nice lady stop me in the hall here on the way to Jefferson and said, I noticed that the shirt you're wearing is the same color. Do you do all of your glasses <laughs> color coordinated? Oh, yes, you're a fashion plate. <laughs> and I had to explain to her it was not a fashion statement. <laughs> but these are I use every day, either outdoors or indoors, and they do help to make what you're looking at a little more clear. Now you mentioned before <clears throat> something about your, your, your uh, templates, but you have a, now you've been talking about, uh, review with us your templates and how they, they opened up so much for you, uh, so many options that you didn't have before. Because in a way it's a kind of contrast as well. The templates, I, I know I talked about before. Here is the one for a check. Uh, you put your check inside here, close this, and it gives you all the apertures that you need to fill in without your pen going scooting right. all over the paper, which is what often happens. I also have a template for signing a credit card. And this also is very useful. Mm -hmm. And you can keep it just in part of your, uh, your, near your, in your wallet. And now while you're talking about signing, tell us about these pens. I've never seen these pens before. Well, and I don't even know where they came from. I have a doting son who loves searching out what I need. It says, uh, there's a number on there, isn't uh -huh. there? Right? Well, and, and it's a gel, uh, and it says that this is a protection against fading water and fraud, but it, it is a type of um, special ink, and you said that special ink, certain kind of ink you can see and other kinds yes. you can't. Is that and correct? This, this is very dark ink mm -hmm. and uh, just a little bit hard to find, but they have to be somewhere in the, sure. wa in the Washington area. Then I have one more template, which is... Uh, for writing, wait, no, no, there are two of them, I'm sorry. This is, my oh gosh, I've forgotten, I don't think I've ever used this one. All of you out there, what do you think? <laughs> Mystery put. But this is the one I thought I was talking about, which has, you can write a novel on this one. Okay, and that shows up if you put this yes. inside of it. And uh, it gives you the, the opportunity that you wouldn't have. Uh, you can write a, a whole page. You can write make a, a list. Note, a list. You can do an envelope. And, and if you use these, this very black ink, it really it helps in the writing, which is one of the real problems once your vision begins to And happen. I made a, a, a mistake, I forgot, but you had said that it's easier for you to see printing 
than it is uh, uh, well, cursive I writing. I can't see cursive writing at and, all. Uh, so no matter how large or what the ink is, for you it's much better if, you know, if it is printed. Well, not only that, but my device, the, uh, the big... The enlarger. Device, the enlarger, the big screen, uh, will not read. Will not read oh, cursive writing. Oh, okay, Only that's printing. what it is. All right. So there are a lot of things to remember, but once you've got them in in, in your mind, then you're you're set to go, right? <laughs> well, of course, that's a whole other problem. Well, yes, for all of us, that's for <laughs> sure. Well, I think we've covered the area of contrast and textile uh, yes. cluing that you have. Uh, I think another area that we talked about in grouping these. Uh, uh, pr products here is illumination and visibility. So I'm going to slide this over here so that you can reach that. Now this is so important for people who are having any kind of vision problem. These are the new LED bulbs. Your gone is the pretzel bulb. And here are the LED bulbs. They look we just like ordinary they bulbs. Like ordinary bulbs. And they'll they fit your, your existing they, fixtures. Absolutely, That's the problem. Absolutely. And they give a clear, uh, almost a definitive light, as though someone had taken a knife and cut oh, really? down through the illumination. And it makes all the difference in the world. You don't have to have one of these in every lamp in your apartment, but to what we did was to choose where I most needed uh -huh. additional light. Sure. And then you have your special night lights. You like oh, these. And, I, and here are these little night lights. You can buy a card of them and turn it around the other way. Home Depot. It's got a little teeny bulb in here, and it's light activated. And during the day, it is not on, at night it is. And I have one in every room. And you like it because and it has a gentle glow, not a bright light. A gentle glow, just enough to show you where your slippers mm -hmm. are and mm -hmm. where the bathroom door is. Now you also have a flashlight at your bedside. You said everybody has that. I didn't even bother bringing it in because everybody has... Uh, one at, at hand. The other thing that you don't have to have, but is certainly very nice, is the headlamp. Oh, you are a fashion plate there, Elizabeth. <laughs> no. You do not have to be a coal miner to wear something like this, but if there is ever an outage, or if you are doing some particular small task that needs a dedicated light, here you have something that is hands-free. Uh-huh. Oh, and it's adjustable also. I see that oh, it's it, adjustable, it, yes. Yeah, it, it tilts and so on so that you can put it just where you want it to be. Again, LED lights. There's another intensity. Uh-huh. Oh, and it, it flashes. flashes. And the flasher is there if you want somebody to find you. Uh -huh. I haven't tried that yet, but one of these dark nights I'm going to flash and see what appears. <laughs> Let's see if have it. Now, another thing about illumination here, we're gonna, I'm going to hand you this. Okay, and if I can just squeeze this one out. Oh, you're so good here. There we go. I got long arms for some reason, right? Now, these, you may wonder what they are. This is a cutting surface for the kitchen. This is a hot pad for the stove. Any intent, any hot, anything goes on here with impunity. I had, was given these and, and said, why in the world didn't you give me the same color? I like, co you know, coordinated color. And the doctor's assistant said, never. You have to have two as primary as you can get, entirely different, so that when you reach for one, you are reaching for what you want. Uh -huh. You're not reaching for the hot pad and the hot uh, utensil that is maybe on it. Uh -huh. Or you are not reaching for the cutting board and perhaps encountering the knife that is on it. So they make those 
different as possible. Okay, I'll put that over here. Now, all right, so that's that, the, the hearing. Okay, so now we're going to talk about voice activation and sound alerts. Yes. Now, first of all, okay, what have you got there? Well, here I also mentioned this the last time we met, which is my talking watch. Well, that was the wrong button. There are several buttons. You do have to fumble there. The time is 11.36 a.m. Uh -huh. There's also a button to tell you what day it is. Well, I, it obviously doesn't wants me to put this in the window. <laughs> it is, it is oh, it's updated. okay. It's fun. And All right. this is something I use more than anything else, which is a wonderful timer, uh, along with uh, hearing loss, vision loss, also energy loss. I have to worry about sitting down anywhere for more than two minutes without the potential of falling sound asleep. I can use this to make sure that it doesn't last the whole day long or through the meal or uh, making me miss some appointment that I have. And This is wonderful because it is so simple. You press two little buttons here at the same time and it clears the screen. Then here is a button for, an, for hours a button for minutes, a button for seconds. And once you have decided the hours, minutes, and seconds that you want, you simply press this wonderful big, what do you call that? Button. <laughs> it, it, it isn't really a button, ah. but you, you can touch it anywhere. Right. And then it rings with a nice loudish tone, although I often go to sleep with it on my neck. <laughs> So that I cannot miss having my ear here when the time is. And you is chose right. that because it's easy for you to manage it when you get that arthritic. You, the little yeah, things absolutely. are hard to do, and you like that. Oppose. They also have some that talk to you, but this meets your needs this right meets, now. This meets my needs. Okay. Right, right. And then I, we do have on the iPad the ability to talk a little bit with Siri. It's like the movie, isn't it, where he yes. spent his whole life talking to her. I, I am not quite familiar. I, I have Siri on my iPad. Well, everybody does, and I well, don't use it very much. It's being a nuisance at the minute. Well, I think. Start timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes and counting. Uh, did you hear that? Yes, 10 minutes and counting. Uh -huh. uh, that, that has, I can see where that's a good reminder for you. Well, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that you can ask, but I did that because I, it's the one that, it's one that I, used when before I got my other timer. Now, like this timer, you also have a bathroom scale. Yes. Uh, uh, now, this one is not as dear to my heart as the others because uh, it often gives me bad news. <laughs> However, it is a matter of simply stepping on the scale and immediately stepping off. And a voice will say, I am ready. And then you step back on, and the voice tells you how much you weigh. And then after you have had the chance to find out the good news or bad news, <laughs> whatever the case may be, she says goodbye now, which is very polite of her. I, I should think so. So now we're down to one of the, the uh, very interesting items, and that's what they call the liquid leveler. And this, uh, I'm not I sure say, how we're going to do that I, now. I, I, well, I'm going to push everything away here and see if we can make if we can just scoot it over. I'm sure we can do this. Okay. Do you want to put it on one of these uh, yes. pads? Yes, why not? Uh, 
Oh. I'm going to pour liquid. We will pretend this is a teapot. And it can be hot or cold? Hot or cold. Stop, stop, that's enough. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? Now the first one of these I had I no longer have because I sent it to Florida to an acquaintance who was having her <laughs> kitchen floor swamped each day as she tried to fill her dog's water bowl. Oh my. And her vision was even worse than mine. So I sent her this and she and the dog are now happily uh, using a dry kitchen floor oh. and she commands to keep him well watered. Oh my goodness, I never would have thought about that. And so it's most useful for something that is hot because I must admit that I many times have overflowed the hot tea cup and it can hurt. Oh yes. So you have to be very careful about that. But it's interesting to me that uh, you keep adding, you keep finding things, or somebody tells you about something just like you told your friend. It's, uh, and I'm just amazed at the technology that's available with all of these things. So. I, I, it's, I, we have only shown you a drop in the ocean of all of the things which are available. Mm -hmm. There are many things that the iPad, for example, offers you, which is fine for the hearing impaired, but not so great for the vision impaired. Mm -hmm. However, it depends, of course, on the degree of uh, de macular degeneration that you're suffering sure. from. Uh, uh, did you want now, to show you the... Well, now I, we have one last comment, and that's about your mobility device. Now, why don't you tell us about that, and then uh, he will be... Uh, Avon, who's here taking some pictures, will later go in and photograph it. And, uh, and so you, why don't you just sit here and tell us what about it. All right. Uh, you've seen the rollators by the hundreds mm -hmm. rolling through Green Spring. And they are all sizes. They have different little baskets. Uh, and you can get them in different colors. But mine is a little bit different from most of the ones I have seen here because it is not only the standard rollator that you stand behind, hopefully very straight and tall, mm -hmm. and push because your balance has been, what should I say? Jeopardized. <laughs> That's a wonderful word, Elaine. Jeopard jeopardized. But mine has an additional feature. It can be turned into a what, push chairs. Mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. I don't know another. Well, it's not a wheelchair, but it is a push chair, I think. It is a push yeah. chair. And one should not be pushed in the standard rollator, but this one has a second set of handles. At the back at, of the at, seat. At the back of the seat. The, the little back support can be snapped off and then be then converted into a push chair, which is the only safe way to be pushed in a rollator. Mm -hmm. There have been several accidents of people being pushed and being thrown oh, yeah. out of the rollator mm -hmm. because it was being used in an incorrect way. I know. Yes, and that so above all, the idea is to use the devices and the products that will increase your safety and comfort, yes. not compromise it. Absolutely. So it's well. I'm really very grateful that you would share all of these things with us. I mean, I can't. My I myself learned so much things that I didn't know. The technology today is just amazing, isn't it? Things that I wasn't even aware. Of. I know that many of the things that you have shown us. Uh, are available for anybody from five dollars to a hundred dollars, and that. But they also have some very fancy things up to five hundred dollars. Things like an electronic color identifier. If you have trouble getting dressed and you don't know purple from black, which I did before I had my cataracts removed, there is a little uh, little device that you will will read the colors for you, 150 colors, so that you can dress yourself and be color coordinated.
there, there are talking labelers. If you take this little wand, it'll read your medication for you that's standing in a special little stand. And of course they have talking microwaves and it goes on and on and on and on. So there, that I suggest that any, of, any resident who uh, has a need, when they develop a need, talk to their, their family, talk to a social worker, talk to their doctor, even refer to the internet. We've been talking about your journey, Elizabeth, but everybody's journey is different. And so we say to you all, on behalf of myself and Elizabeth Grant, uh, embrace the changes that come your way uh, and increase the uh, quality of life and enjoy being here at Greenspring. And we wish you a good day.